Hi everyone, welcome to Crown Pointers. And today I have the privilege of speaking with Jackie Mulligan, who's a wellness coach and works with um, youth, with uh, groups and also one-to-one. And I'm gonna link below to your website, Jackie. Um, Jackie's got a really wonderful, uplifting monthly newsletter called Zeal, of all things, which I think is just such a perfect name wow. for your personality and for the newsletter, which is really encouraging. And it has resources every month, um, whether it, it you sometimes have, I think, YouTube, book recommendations, wellness tips. It's just a wealth of information and um, a really fun newsletter. So I'll link to that uh, when I post the video in the comments. I know, Jackie, that you have um, nine pillars of wellness that you talk about. Mm -hmm. And first three were ones I think most of us are fairly familiar with. It was um, exercise or functional movement, nutrition, and sleep. Mm -hmm. Then your list goes way beyond that, which I think is really neat and talks about a number of other things, which maybe we can touch on. But one of them is play. Yeah. So I just want to ask you, what does play have to do with wellness? How does that fit in? Yeah, it, 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 in a lot of ways, actually, Lisa. So to, one of my other pillars is actually stress management. And um, I feel that in this world and this society of like the, you know, the hustle is really what everybody aims for. And it's kind of like our worth is defined of, um, about how much we can do in one day. Um, it's really, it kind of takes the, the play out of life and kind of has a serious tone of like, the more you do, the more you're worth. And I don't, I, I think I got caught up in that. Um, and even just, you know, in the business world, I think as many people do, it's kind of like, um, you got to hustle in order to succeed. Um, but it wasn't until I, I paused and actually started to play that I realized that my work and my creativity and my productivity actually increased. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so did my overall well being. my stress reduced significantly. Um, I started laughing and, and really being childlike and, um, that's not really the tone for the hustle, right? The hustle is serious and every moment counts. And it's just, um, it doesn't leave a lot of room for, for error or, or play. Right. Um, and so when I say play, I, I kind of need this like broad spectrum. So let's say um, anything from play like with children, right? So, you know, if you observe children, they're really so present. They are not worrying about an hour ago or what's gonna happen the next hour. They don't even know what time it is or really what day it is. <laughs> and that's a luxury, right? Um, but, uh, but to really look at them and to see that we're, they're really right there in the moment. Where they are is where they are. What time it is is right, you know, right now. And, um, and they're fully able to engage and be mindful and be present. And, um, and they play, they don't care who's looking, they don't care who's thinking about what, they're just having fun, they're imaginative, they're creative. Um, so there's like a play in, that chi in a child sense, a true child sense. Um, and, um, and then there's this like play with sports. So doing things that connect us to our childhood. So that can be anything like playing tennis or basketball or playing tag or, you know, anything, just like just being a goofball, you know, playing. Um, and I found even through my practice that this is something that adults, most adults are really uncomfortable with. It's just <laughs> so out of their comfort zone because it's not their norm. They haven't done it in so long. Yeah. And as you're talking, it kind of strikes me that it's a mindset as much as an activity because cooking could be boring and, um, a chore or with a different mindset, it could become play. Right. Which is yeah. It kind of takes the, I have to, and turns it into, I get to. Okay. You know, and so instead of I have to make dinner or this is just another thing, it's like I get to cook this meal and it turns it into an opportunity and almost like a privilege rather than this like burden and this hustle kind of like another thing I have to do before I, you know, can rest tonight. Absolutely. Now, do you weight all nine pillars the same? Do you weight play as important as the other eight or... You know, I think that some they I, I think each person is individual. So for example, if you're going to take a high level um, CEO who has a ton of stress, always traveling, doesn't eat well, barely sleeps. Um, I don't know if, uh, if play would be as important as I would say managing stress in a healthy way, which could equate to play, um, or sleeping would be. Um, now, I'm, I, you know, sometimes people like that also know how to play hard, so that I, I don't know if that would you know, be the same category. But um, I think in a majority of areas, play, could 
equate to stress management in such a significant way that it actually is one of the heavier ones that I would say of, of importance. Mm -hmm. um, and it's usually because not enough people do it. And like I said, it, it kind of fall, trickles into this feeling of less stress and more of a personal connection and growth. And so it's, it's one of the pillars that kind of leak out into, into other ones organically. Yeah. Now you mentioned something about unplugging and it reminded me about something that I had learned from you, which is 90 minute appointments. Um, yeah. How, what is that about? Yeah. Okay. So actually, if you want, I'll share underneath this also, there's a really great podcast um, about our ultradian rhythm. So it's basically, we have a circadian rhythm, which is our 24 hour clock uh, daily. Um, and then within that, there's a 120 minute ultradian rhythm. So our body like goes on another rhythm throughout the 24 hours every 120 minutes. And so um, basically the science is that you work or do something, a task for 90 minutes, solely um, focused on the one thing you're doing right in front of you. So let's say, for example, you're working on a, a PowerPoint or a project um, or a specific task. You're not doing anything else. You're not answering the phone, emails, text message, nothing. So you're engaged fo fully for 90 minutes. And then you take a 30 minute break. And that's where you're completely stepping away from um, the computer or that work with the task that you're doing. Um, and you can kind of take a break. You can get a sip of water. You can go on a small walk. You can catch up on the things um, that you missed, you know, on your phone. Um, and it kind of, uh, I, I have seen over and over again, productivity skyrocket in, in this sense because the, fo the work is so focused and that time is so focused. Um, there's not kind of all these clicking around and aimless. You know, a lot of people I'll work with will say, I don't know really what I do all day. I'm kind of aimless. And so I, it definitely focuses us, us more. Um, but even on, if we wanted to like flip it and talk a little bit about play, you could do 90 minutes of play and then have your rest actually be coming and, you know, working on, on something for 30 minutes. You can, you can flip flop that, um, you know, in either, either direction. But I have read many um, cases where writers will actually write in 90 minute blocks and then go away for, you know, for 30 minutes and then come back. And, you know, anybody can do anything for 30, for, sorry, for 90 minutes. Uh -huh. And so it's kind of like, I have to get through this lump of work and, you know, whatever I get accomplished in these 90 minutes will work, but I'm not going to, you know, be distracted. And, and I think, you know, your viewers will be surprised in just seeing um, how that translates into um, having not even um, more work, but more a higher quality of work. Anything else that you think that we should talk about related to play or any of the other pillars or things we've talked about today? You know, I think play is just such an important uh, part of people's lives. And there's something I thought of that, um, that if, if you don't have uh, 30 minutes a day to meditate, even that if that's in a playful way, you need an hour. And it's kind of like, wow. And so I, I almost want to say to uh, your listeners, you know, if you can't find a day or a morning a week to play, you need two. <laughs> and I really, because um, there has to be play in, in your life and trusting in um, the, the time where you'll be unplugged and you really allow yourself to, um, to you know, dive into culture, to dive into, um, you know, a true interest of yours. Um, I think, you know, it won't come back to, to uh, benefit your work or to really fill up your, your, your cup. Um, so I think just leaving off with that is that if you don't, if you don't feel like you have time to play, you need to, you need to play double. That's who needs it the most. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And for, in terms of just starting, you think just, um, explore journal. Yeah, I think explore, you know, even just what I mentioned, like culture was another example. Um, I was in the city yesterday and went to, to a few museums and it was, that was really playful to just kind of like be a tourist in your own city. Um, and, and so, yeah, I would say starting off with almost pretending to be a tourist or a kid, you know, you have to put yourself in this, this new role or identity before you really allow yourself um, to play. So I would recommend that first and give yourself a half day to begin with and, um, and then watch kind of the fruits uh, of, your, of your rest uh, unfold. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Jack. You're so welcome, Lisa. Everyone, if you like the video, please thumbs up, subscribe for others. And then, you know what I'd love to hear in the comments is what do you do to play? Um, we can share ideas with one another and um, uh, maybe try out some of each other's ideas for play. So thank you, Jackie. You're so welcome, Lisa. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye, you too.